Joining me tonight is Steve Nichols, political science professor at Cal State University San Marcos. And welcome, Steve. Thank you. Let's start out with this. How much do you think the current political situation in Washington, D.C. Uh, is linked to this federal shutdown? They're completely linked. Um, the atmosphere is so poisonous and so divided in Washington now within Congress and between Congress and the president that what would normally be routine matters of business um, grind the whole, a whole of government to a halt. So it's, they're inextricably linked. And we're going to come back to sort of that extremism that seems to be dividing our mm -hmm. government. Um, but first, the Republicans suffered a political backlash after the shutdown in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. Do you think history is going to repeat itself this time around? Probably. Um, and it's interesting to compare the two. You might think that the Republican Party would have learned the lesson from the 90s and, and not gone down this road. And there are a lot of similarities between the two situations with the House taking on the president. And, and, um, but at the same time, there are some differences that, that I think that many in the House think that, that it, this is a different situation and they can get a different outcome here. You had an example of a, a, a politician who I believe is from Texas mm -hmm. who went to a park that was shut down because of his vote. Tell mm -hmm. us what happened. Well, I, it was a clip that I saw uh, online and it was a representative, uh, a Tea Party representative from Texas who was berating a park ranger uh, about the fact that the park that he and others were trying to enter it was a national park was being closed. And yet his vote to shut down the government was why, and not just his vote, but his vote among many others, was exactly why the park was being closed. It was a tremendous uh, uh, gap disconnect, between, yeah, disconnect right. between you know what he had done and, and, and the reality of the situation. And, and do you think that's that's yeah. something going on with the Republican Party or politicians in D.C. in general, having this disconnect of what what they're yeah. really doing and the impact on people? Yeah, I mean, I think that that particular incident showed a lack of awareness of. of of the connection between the vote and the closing of the park, but I think that there is a more, and I don't know if that's typical of, of the GOP generally, but I think there is a belief that the government shutdown isn't that big of a deal. I mean, and there's a position, especially among the Tea Party, that they don't like the federal government anyway, so closing it down is, in some ways is a point of honor. How, how about here in San Diego? Um, mm -hmm. Could the Democrats here or the local GOP, could they uh, see any fallout from this, this division o over the shutdown? Sure. I mean, I think any, you know, the federal government is a, is is a force in America that, that it's, it's shutting down affects every region of the country. Everyone who's employed by it or employed directly, indirectly through it, uh, anyone who depends on its services, which is the vast majority of all of us, uh, yeah, we're all going to feel the effects of this thing. Well, October 17th is the deadline mm -hmm. for resolving uh, the debt ceiling. Um, how do you see negotiations proceeding uh, on that? In the, in the same right. manner, or do you think they're, they're going to be a little bit uh, more cautious in that? Well, there were some statements from Speaker Boehner yesterday that suggested that perhaps uh, he indicated that, that uh, he would be willing, at least he, he was reported to have indicated in private, that he'd be willing to uh, put forward a, a debt ceiling resolution that allowed for uh, Republicans and Democrats to pass it together, that it wouldn't be linked to defending Obamacare or you know anything else, which suggested maybe some hope and some optimism that, that not only a softening of the position on, on uh, defending Obamacare and, and continuing government, but the debt thing as well. And so it seemed to look like maybe there was some softening there, and then there was a press conference after a, a closed session this morning that actually seemed to indicate a further hardening of, of position. So I'm, 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 I was optimist, optimistic last night. I'm not so much so today. Um, who are some of the biggest winners and losers in the uh, uh, political uh, sh in this shutdown as far as the political fight goes? It depends on how the fight plays out. I think we're seeing a messaging game, a messaging war right now. And in a sense, the, the Republicans have the simpler message, the simpler narrative, this narrative of we want to negotiate and the president won't negotiate. I think that resonates with some people who see this as a fight between the two parties and, and, and one party wants to come and talk and the other won't. The Democrats' narrative is actually, I think, a little more complicated, that what we're being asked to negotiate is to negotiate away the things we've won in the last two presidential elections through the normal policymaking process. And a law. And a law and that a now law. exists. Affordable that, care right. is a law. They're saying, oh, disregard this law. Right. Who's going to do that? But there's a couple more steps to that logic that... that that I think might make it harder to resonate. I mean, I think most people look at the shutdown and say the Republicans did this. But. Okay, well, we'll close on this. Um, what is it going to take to improve this uh, political extremism in, in D.C.? This is the product of forces that have been at work for 20 to 30 years or longer in this country. Um, partisan sorting, the part is becoming more homogeneous, gerrymandering, a change in the media culture that's inflamed these kinds of things. Uh, there's no quick and easy fix to this. If there were, we would already have done it. All right, political science professor Steve Nichols, uh, thanks so much for your insight. Thank you.